All right, I'm the 570 limo here. Um, it's coming along. It's taking a little longer, but that's all right. The, uh, some of my plans have had to change. It's not going together quite as well as I hoped uh, because I just don't have another one to look at for reference. Um, nope, I can't find the right pictures on the internet as far as cage location, floor location, this kinds of thing. So you know what? It's still working though. I just took it for another drive. Uh, it's coming along. This is going to be my redneck limo. It's even red. So it ain't going to look perfect. This ain't no fancy high dollar show rig or custom build out of an expensive shop. This is just me in my garage with what I've got and doing it on the cheap because I want to be able to get everybody in this thing. So I'll bring you over and I'll just kind of show you what I've done so far, where I'm at. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty close to, you know, once I do something with the cage here, I'm pretty close to just having this thing ready to take out and do a little trail ride with it show you what I got all right factory front front floor is back in it just needs to be screwed in got to put the transmission tunnel on there uh, the cables for the winch need to be extended all the way back to the battery front seat mounts in I went ahead and um, added a little cross member here for an extra support for the outside of the seats got a couple cross members here that are welded to where the cage you know, sits to the frame and then the uh, riser here for the back of the seat mount. I, I, that was kind of one of my problems. I bought a floor out of a four seat 800 rear floor. The intention was just to put it in so it goes right up against the regular 570 front seats, but I forgot an 800 has a like a stadium seating, so it's rised in the back. So I was doing some cutting and trimming, trying to get things to work and just could not get it to fit. So I said, forget it. I got the front floor and so I just put in a couple more bars here to uh, kind of a floor support and I'm just going to build a, a sheet metal floor to go across there and then up underneath the front seats. Like I said, redneck limo but it's coming along and it's going to work just fine for what I'm after. Like I said, this is no this is no high dollar build. This is just me in the garage. But uh, coming along, like I said, got the outside frame rails, all the cross members in. I mean, so I'm ready to do a little polishing up and just get this thing put back together. Battery cables need to be extended back to the battery for the winch. Get the bed back on. And one thing I did do on this was uh, because the 29's rub so bad, I went ahead and put a little two inch lift on here, just the shock bracket relocation. Got that off of eBay, shipped for 79 bucks. Yeah, a real, real simple install. Heck, you don't even have to pull your tires off to do it. Gives it a little lift and it does rub still when I turn corners and you know going over a bump. Uh, at least it doesn't rub going straight or anything, but I'm still gonna have to put forward arms or something on if I want to keep running these 29s. So that being said, a shifter cable out of the uh, 900 four seater goes went right on new shifter handle right in place cable hooked right up to the transmission heck it was even already adjusted i just slipped it in there and didn't even have to adjust it which was a surprise so i'm a i'm about to i'm getting about there and i'm just gonna take for now i'm gonna come off of here from the factory cage just with a straight piece to the center point and then a straight piece to the back and cut all this top stuff off of here and tie this cage together and then run a, a bar down the middle and then run some bars in the back here on the back window and then a bar across the bottom of the front windshield there just to help strengthen all this stock stuff up uh, i'll probably do a cage on this next year but i'm happy i'm digging it it's coming along great you know for having the buying the machine and Heck, I got about 400 bucks, 500 bucks worth of parts into it, so that's not too bad. And this will do just fine. I'm going to keep this as a, just a narrow four seater, keep it at the 50 inch. And that way, the five of us can all hop in there. I got the bump seat for the back, and then we can go sightseeing just on some like little 50 inch trails or, you know, just little, little sightseeing tours. Now we don't have to take two machines. And I got my other one for my kind of my rock crawling buggy here. This is the 16. I put the four inch portals on that. 30% uh, reduction. I got the 30 inch Rockabilly tires on it. 
Uh, really liking that thing. It, it performs very well. So, all right, I've got the Super ATV forward A-arms on this now. Got the two inch bracket lift on there with the 29 inch big horns. Everything looks good, fits good. Real happy with that. Now the next step on the limo is I need to get a skid plate on this thing. And uh, being they never did a 574 seater, I'm hoping an 800 four seater stuff fits, being the 570 and the 800 are pretty much the same from the seats forward. This is another eBay find here. We've got the uh, factory Polaris aluminum skid plate for an 800 four seater. Pretty cheap for a skid plate, uh, a little over $100. So let's open it up and see what all this thing gets for the price. Double back tape here in the box, parts list, fasteners, hopefully instructions. skid plate still got the little plastic stuff on there which is good nice looking aluminum it's like another real similar Probably it's going to sound like hitting rocks, too. Wow, multi-piece. Several pieces, so this ought to be a little easier to assemble. I think this was only about $150 too on eBay. So, real cheap. Especially compared to the real nice UHMW ones that are about three, four, five hundred dollars at least. So I'm hoping I can make this work, but I'm pretty sure with some self-tapping sheet metal screws, I can make it work. They're all in really good shape. They're not, oh, this one's got a bend in it here. Must be from shipping. But other than that, everything's in real good shape. So, Hopefully this will go on nice and easy. All the holes are stamped out well. Protective coating on everything. 
let's roll this thing in the garage and I'll swing it up from the ceiling to get it lifted up and get this install going. Okay, got the limo all hung up in the air from the trusty old chain hoist right from the ceiling. Hey, when you don't have a lift, you make do with what you got. Now it's time to get underneath this thing and see how well this skid plate fits. Okay, the first step in this is to get your old skid plate off. As you can see, you know, part of mine's missing anyway from the cut and the stretch. Uh, back of it's already off. You just got to pull this front one off. It takes 10 mil bolts, 10 mil bolt heads up here. This is the only one I got left. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. And then this is the front piece here. Let's see if you can see that. And that is going to sit right up here. Lines up with a bunch of holes for fasting and go from there. All right, this is the extent of the instructions. Pretty simple. Raise and secure the vehicle, remove stock plastic skid plate. Um, see illustration one for a skid plate layout. That's this here. Each skid plate overlaps the next one to the rear. So we're gonna start at the rear to install the skid plates. I'm glad I read that. I was gonna start at the front. Uh, get them installed and then uh, snug up the bolts and then go back and retighten everything up. Align it and tighten it. So pretty darn simple install. Looks like uh, might need some uh, Torx bits. And we'll follow the, fa follow the fasteners, I guess. Okay, here's all the fasteners that come in the kit here. You get a bunch of uh, almost like self-tapping screws, uh, a couple of Torx head screws, and a couple just regular hex head screws that are not self-tapping. You get a couple of hooks, and then all the recessed washers, and a couple of metal blocks there. Now, the one thing this does not be real clear on, it says start from the rear, but it doesn't tell you which holes to start with on the frame. So I guess I'm just going to have to kind of figure that out. Um, you know, the instructions say to um, the rear section is attached with two hex flange bolts passing into the threaded aluminum hooks. Well, it doesn't tell me where to put those, though. So anyway, we're going to figure this out. But these are all the fasteners. Lay them out. Make sure you got everything you need. There's a count on the uh, Illustration 1 instructions. And let's figure this out. Okay, being I don't have an 800, this is a 570 with an 800 skid plate. Uh, the back of the 570 is the Ranger style, not the 800 style. So I'm going to go ahead and start from the front and hope this works. So starting from the front, the first thing you got to do is you got to take these square blocks that are threaded and it says they're Torx screws that go into them, but you can plainly see it's not a Torx. It is an Allen head or socket head cap screw to be correct. So anyway, those go up here in the back, like right behind the front differential. And then you thread a thin washer and the screw up into that. And there's a bag of thin washers and a bag of thick washers. So this piece in the inside, then the thin washer and the screw right through to hold it all together. I'm going to leave everything pretty loose until I get the rest of it in. Like I said, being I don't have an 800, I can't start with the back because I don't know how the back's going to work out because this is a Ranger back, not an 800 back. The next piece of this is this one here that's kind of got this little cut angle cut into it and go ahead and peel the plastic off here This will be one of the self tappers. All right, it'll be a deep washer here, here, and here on this front skid plate because, like I said, there's deep and the thin washers. The next one to go in place is just this regular big square one here, and the big holes are going to go towards the front of the machine. 
Okay, as you can see, some of these parts go right on. This is the 800 parts. The front goes right on, goes right in the holes, the lips up here. The second piece ties right into the uh, front piece. And, but after that, it does not fit in there because the 570 has a skid plate all the way at the back there where I guess the 800 must not. So what I was able to do is this. So what I did is I just got this first piece coming back here. And then the third piece actually comes in here. See how it overlaps. And so I just took this second middle piece here and just slipped it in to fill the gap. And then I layered it, you know, under here and then over this one. So it'll just have a nice steady slide if I'm sliding over something. But there you have it, an 800 four-seater skid plate install on a 570 sort of four-seater redneck four-seater limo. I'm excited. I'm happy. This is, like I said, this is no, like, professional look at me, impress your buddies build. This is I want to get my family out on the trail build. And my wife will be driving this one, so it'll mostly be just a scenic sightseeing machine. So it's perfect.